If you're getting into astrophotography, you've probably heard about guiding. And if you've heard about guiding, you've probably heard about PhD. But what is it? And how do you use it? And how do you get the best out of it? I'm Dylan O'Donnell, and all you have to do is push here, dummy. Did you like that new intro? A little history. PhD was originally developed by Craig Stark, who's also the guy who developed Nebulosity. He eventually let the code go and gave it to the community so it could be open sourced and Brett McKee took over. And that's when it really became popular and it's really ubiquitous these days. Everybody uses it. The project now is primarily developed by Andy Galasso and also Bruce Waddington and between them they manage the forums and the support and they've done a really fantastic job. PhD stands for Push Here Dummy and sometimes it's not always a one-click operation it's maybe not that simple. However compared to the guiding software that was around before then PhD was a real improvement because you could choose your calibration star click the button and it would nudge the mount up down left to right and basically work out itself how it could calibrate. Just a side note I'm actually in the credits for PhD because I helped design the logo and the guide button and some of the user interface elements and the website as well. I'm happy to be in the credits with a bunch of way more talented people who did a lot more work on PhD than I did. But every time you push that guide button, you're pushing something that I designed, which I think is pretty cool. So what's guiding? Guiding uses a guide scope or an off-axis guide camera to lock onto a star and send small corrections to the mount to stop that star from moving about in any direction. This keeps your telescope completely locked in to one area of the sky and allows you to take really long exposures. Now in theory a well-engineered telescope and mount are not going to have any problems, it's already tracking the sky. But in reality, small imperfections in the gears, in the mount, in the tracking rate, in even the, the, to a lesser degree the polar alignment and the level of the, the telescope can be corrected by PhD. In reality only very expensive mounts um, can get away with doing unguided exposures for astrophotography. But even the big observatories with massive telescopes where those small imperfections are actually magnified they also have to guide. In fact in the old days the astronomers had to guide manually so they would sit there during long exposures with often with a small joystick type device and like a computer game just stay locked on to a star. Now we have software, free software, to do that for us. So to get started the first thing you probably want to do is connect your mount to PhD and of course this is most commonly done with a guide cable which runs from the camera that comes out of the back of the guide scope to the mount itself. On the CGX for example the guide port's back here. But the developers don't want you to do that. It's not the best way. A lot of people when they get their guide camera it comes with a guide cable and you've got an ST port on your mount as well so why wouldn't you connect the two together? Of course. Wrong. What you should do is grab the cable, pour some explosives on it and destroy it. have a modern mount. Unless you haven't bought it in the last decade, your mount supports ASCOM. So your mount's already talking to your computer. So there shouldn't be any need for the camera to talk directly to the mount because the computer and ASCOM acts as the gateway, as the middleman between these two things. So the first button you're going to want to press is this little connect to equipment button. Everything starts from there and you get the connect equipment dialog here. Now in here I've got it connected to simulators because it's way too rainy for me to show you live. There is an equipment profile and I've got several different profiles. The profile manager is a really great thing and when you go to manage your profile you can create a new profile using a wizard and the wizard is really excellent. In fact if you're ever having problems just run through that wizard again because it will work great. So my normal setup has my ZWO and you can see the mount is connecting straight to the Celestron Telescope driver, ASCOM. I used to have it connected on camera, which means the 
mount was being sent pulses direct from the camera. And as I was saying before, that's not the way we should be doing it. You should be connecting your mount directly via ASCOM. So the mount's connected to the computer, the camera's connected to the computer. Once both those things are ready to go, connect those. Once you're connected, these buttons will be green and you've got this loop button here. The loop button will begin looping exposures and up here we can see our stars, our available stars. You can actually auto select a star so it will automatically find a star that it wants to guide on. Then you go down to the guide button and push here dummy. It will automatically start to calibrate itself. Which you'll see down here it will be saying we're step two, we're step three, we're step four, and it's pushing the mount. As you do these things, there is an error display at the top here, which gives you really helpful hints for configuring PHD. I really advise reading them whenever they pop up, because they actually make a lot of sense, and they've really taken a lot of the guesswork out of PHD. It's really good. Here the guide star we selected is being pushed around, up, down, left, and right, so it can work out which way's up and which way's down and then it will automatically know which way it should send its correction pulses. Down in the corner you'll see which way it's pushing, north, south, east or west, and when that's finished it'll head over to guiding just like that. That's when the guide graph kicks in. That total error you want to keep under one arc second. So that's 0.4, 0 0.83, 0 0.86 that number is the only one I really look at, this one here. As long as that number is generally under one, you're going to be pretty good. You can see the pulses going through now. Red for deck and blue for RA. That sends the corrections to the mount. And that keeps that star nice and locked on. So it's not far from push here dummy. It really does do most of the work for you. There's a lot of settings throughout the whole program. You really don't need to touch them unless you know what you're doing or you're trying to hyper tune your, uh, your guiding. Straight out of the wizard, it's actually really good. Now, if you see these lines going up or down in any particular direction, like you see a trend where the, the blue line or the red line are going further up or down and not hitting the middle, something's wrong and you need to troubleshoot. One thing I got into trouble was I accidentally changed this from auto to south because I'm in the southern hemisphere. Never do that. It doesn't work and it will screw things up. Sometimes it's not simple and sometimes you do get errors. If that happens, the first thing you should do is check the cables because if anything's wrong mechanically or anything's wrong with the connections and that sort of thing, PHD can't really fix that for you. So check your cables first. It might seem obvious, but turn it off and turn it back on again. To try the mount, try the computer, try a different USB port. All of these things can glitch from time to time. Go through the new setup wizard again. That's always a good thing to do. It actually helps quite a bit. I can't tell you the number of times when I've had trouble and just gone through the wizard one more time, it's been fine. You can also try clearing the calibration and going again. You do that by hitting the little brain icon and then you can clear the uh, calibration under the guide section. Check the weather. A lot of the time the issues that you see, especially if it's losing a star or having trouble finding a star, it's because there's high cloud up in the atmosphere that you can't really see visually but it's definitely impacting your, your guide scope images. So it could just be a weather issue. When a cloud passes over, suddenly things go haywire, you get the beep of death. Um, so it could be a weather related issue as well. Make sure your camera is sensitive enough. It's not a good idea to use a colour camera as a guide scope camera. You should try and use a, something sensitive. I'm using the ZW120MM uh, which is a monochrome CMOS camera and it's really good. It's really quite sensitive. So the sensitivity of the camera can make a difference. This is a classic error. Make sure you're not guiding on a hot pixel. Sometimes even if you auto select a star there might be a pixel which is sitting at full well saturation on your on your guiding and it's not really a star, it just looks like a star and you hit that and your guiding looks amazing because it's not moving really so there's not much going on in the guide graph and you think this is fantastic but actually it's just a hot pixel 
So a classic error. And of course, make sure your alignment is good. There is a misconception that alignment is most of the problems with PhD, but to be honest, you can be a little bit out of a line and it will still work fine. PhD will compensate for that. The symptom that you would get if uh, you had bad alignment is actually field rotation. It should still track the star okay. So it can be even a couple of arc, arc minutes out. But still, good alignment makes for good photos and makes for easier guiding because the PhD software has less to do. So definitely make sure you have good alignment in the mount and polar alignment in the mount as well. See my video on the all-star polar align if you're not familiar with that. So how about some tips for getting the best out of PhD2? One thing you should do is download the latest version because uh, at least at the time of recording this video they've just released Predictive PEC. Now Predictive PEC will actually do a bit of automatic periodic error correction by looking at the trends in the guiding so far and applying corrections to the algorithm as it goes. It's a real improvement on what we've had so far, so definitely download the latest version and give it a go. It will probably improve your guiding. Also, when you set up the guide scope, uh, try training your telescope on a bright star like Sirius, and then make sure that the bright star is in the middle of your telescope and also in the middle of the guide scope as well. This will reduce the kind of reflection you get um, with the guide scope and the main OTA. So that will improve your guiding as well and prevent uh, a bit of drifting. Try and keep the guiding loop over one second. I guide on about two seconds. Anything below that, you're basically just chasing the seeing because the, the sky is a bit wobbly anyway as you're taking your exposures. And if you're continually correcting those errors, you're pushing it to a correction that's already finished. It's not adaptive optics where you're doing sub-second corrections so quickly that you can correct for that atmospheric distortion. That's not what it's for. It's for more of the warping and bending of the atmosphere between the horizon and the zenith and that sort of thing. PhD will correct for those things. But you want to give it a long enough exposure time that you are not chasing the weather. You're not chasing the um, second to second atmospheric distortions. You're chasing the longer average. Finally, use dithering. Dithering makes a huge difference. I'll show you a frame that hasn't used dithering. So it's guiding really well, and I'm tracking really well, but you can see that it gets the camera's read distortion as vertical lines in this case. Dithering takes a little more to set up, but it means it will shift the frame a few pixels in each way before every exposure. And this has the effect of randomizing all the noise around it, and instead of those lines being quite discreet, it pushes them around a bit and they all just get averaged out when you go to stack your images. And that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed the overview of PhD2. I wasn't doing a full deep dive on the algorithms or anything like that, but I just wanted to give you a set up and go, some general tips that you should be using. Maybe if you experienced this video, it didn't mean much to you, but hopefully you picked up a tip here and there. And for the beginners, it gives you a good oversight of how you should be connecting them out and how you can get started. So clear skies. That's much better. <laughs>